Hi, my name is Anya Earl. I'm the Director of Foster Care Services here at Safiuk, Nevada. I chose Healthy Touch as a topic because I think it's so important for kids in foster care to have access to the whole uh, childhood experience. And for me, having physical touch as a part of your life as a child is just so pivotal. It helps you build relationships, it helps you feel safe, and so all of those um, pieces are so important to the bigger puzzle when we are raising children, and so I think that was a big, big piece of it for me. Well, I think that as foster parents, it can be scary to, to touch kids that aren't your own, right? And so, and also, you're strangers to them, and so building that relationship takes time and effort and um, a real awareness of where the children are at in their process, and so being able to recognize that and being able to um, be purposeful in your physical touch with, with kids is really important, and so it's not intuitive as a parent to ask your child if it's okay to give them a hug. Um, so as foster parents, we have to learn that skill and we have to learn to listen to the cues that foster kids give us and so that we can make good choices and so that we can make progress in that area. I would define healthy touch um, from anything from uh, a high five to a big huge hug and kiss if you need it, right? So anything that a kid feels safe with Anything that you feel safe with as a caregiver, that's healthy touch. Um, we can do lots of different things to um, to show physical touch, right? We can do we can do high fives, like I said. We can play hand games. We can scratch backs. We can um, pat a shoulder. We can brush hair and, and do braids. We can do lots of different things. We can paint nails. So there's really just a wide range of activities that help our kids feel close and connected. You know, we often think about physical touch as um, hugs and kisses, right? But there are so many things that happen before that in relationships to, that build up to a hug. So we can remember that all those things are important. It's not just the hug and kiss goodnight. Um, it's all those other things in between, sitting close to kids on the couch while you watch a, me a movie, or um, holding hands in the, in the grocery store. Things like that can really be helpful in building that relationship. I think that for kids who have big big bubbles, big personal space bubbles, or kids who are wary of physical touch, you're gonna wanna go slow. So the keys to that would be a lot of questions, for, you know, asking if it's okay before you do something that involves physical touch, um, being mindful of their personal space and boundaries and recognizing them out loud, saying, I know that you're uncomfortable with me getting close, so I'm gonna stand right here. You know, that helps them understand that you are recognizing their space and you're respecting that, and that's a huge piece to the puzzle. Um, another thing that we can do is uh, model a good personal touch for those kids who are weary of personal touch for other reasons, right? Maybe they've been hurt, and so those kinds of things uh, don't feel familiar and they don't feel safe. And so by modeling appropriate touch around them, that can help them um, uh, calm and, um, fears that they might have around physical touch. So um, I've talked to foster parents who do things like uh, they offer hugs and kisses to every single person in the household and you can say yes or no and that means biological kids can say yes or no. So that gives everybody an opportunity to have um, have their needs met physically uh, with with touch but also be able to show what your what your personal boundaries are and, and respect that. So I thought that's a great opportunity for foster parents to, to do. Um, and then we have other foster parents who are really nervous about physical touch and so they do some very basic touch like high fives when things really good things happen. Most kids are not averse to a high five or a fist bump so we want to be able to find ways where um, kids are willing to connect with us. Okay, so we do have a lot of kids who have an unhealthy understanding of physical touch too, right? So they're all in your personal space and in your business. Maybe they're in your, your bag looking at all your things or they're, 
um, you know, investigating every part of us, it feels like. Um, there are lots of things that we can do for that, and a lot of it is just recognition, right? We're teaching, teaching, teaching. So, um, you know, hey, Johnny, it's not okay to be this close to somebody unless you ask first. So being repetitive and, and continually teaching those skills are, is how kids learn. Um, it's how they learn naturally with, you know, um, by developmentally when they're younger they learn that they can't be on top of somebody else and they have to stand separate from other people or they're not allowed to touch the things in the grocery store a lot of kids don't get that education and so we as uh, foster parents are tasked with that skill building sometimes at a much later age developmentally or chronologically well, sometimes at a much later stage chronologically um, and so we are we're tasked with all these extra things in personal building personal space and building some social boundaries and social teaching them about social norms that can really help I think that uh, physical touch is so important for foster parents to recognize and understand because it can really help kids build relationship with our families and we know that healing happens through relationship so if we can get that physical touch um, in line with what we want to teach them and how we want, want them to leave our foster homes as you know um, successful young adults we have to be able to teach that physical touch in a healthy and safe way